today. Uh, Landsvirkjun, the National Power Company of Iceland. Uh, we are in the process of building a new power plant in northeast Iceland at Eistrikir. Uh, and my responsibilities in the project management are environmental uh, aspects as well as local communication with stakeholders. Uh, <coughs> Today I'm going to tell you about how we're communicating with the local stakeholders during uh, construction time. Uh, and especially about the project that we're working on with the stakeholders and other participants in the area uh, with the aim of monitoring the impact of the new power plant uh, related industrial development and as well as increase in tourism in the area. Uh, and I just want to point out this is a voluntary project. But first, uh, a little bit about the project itself. It's, as I said, in the northeast part of the country. It's up here. It's about 26 kilometers from the nearest town at Husavik. In Husavik there live uh, around 2,000 people. But in the vicinity and in the uh, municipalities around the project there are uh, around 4,200 people. Uh, the biggest town in the north is Akureyri and here we have 18,000 people. I want to point out to you that we have two other geothermal uh, power stations in this area. Krapla, that is 60 megawatts, and then Bjarnaflag, which is a small one, 3 megawatts. But this is the oldest power station geothermal in Iceland and has been up and running since 1969. Um, 30 years later, or 1999, uh, local utilities in the area started a company with the aim of seeing or finding out if it would be feasible to harness the geothermal area at Eistrækir uh, in the hope of being able to use it then to improve uh, the local economy and the livelihood in the area, in this part of the country. And as you can see here, the first steam well was drilled in 2002 and it gave good intentions, and in 2011, we had already, from the steam well drilled at that time, 45 megawatts available. At that time, we started preparation work, one being uh, building a road from the town of Husavik up to the area, and also some groundwork and other infrastructural work within the site. In 2015, construction began for the power station, and we plan to have uh, electricity available in October 2017, and then another 45 megawatts in April 2018, and then in total at that time, 90 megawatts. Regarding the ownership of the company, Landsvirkjun started it, its involvement in 2005, but in 2014, uh, the company merged into Landsvirkjun. And here you can see a, a picture of the power station house and related structures. Uh, if we now go into uh, looking into the expectation and concerns of the stakeholders in the area, they are of course, they vary between individuals and uh, what interest they have, but the main ones are people are hoping for a positive effect on local economy and the society as well. But uh, there has been a drawback in this area of the country, uh, lack of availability of electricity and a secure delivery of electricity. But at the same time, uh, as there are positive, people are hoping for positive effect on economy and society, there are of course concerns about impact on the natural environment. This tricky area, it's, well, I can I say, almost untouched area. It's unique, it has some unique nature, but it has been used in the past. There was sulfur mining in the old days, and it was, it was habitated until um, 1873. Today, it's used uh, uh, for tourism industry, not much, but a little. There are horse riding tours that go there, and there's a hut that travelers can go and stay in. And there's also sheep grazing, and then there are around 5,000 sheep that go and visit the area every summer. Uh, because of these environmental concerns, uh, the environmental performance is of great concern for us at Landsvirkjun during the project, as well as uh, communicating with the stakeholders and other land users, so everyone is working uh, in consensus and in harmony. 
So during construction time now, we have been very active in meeting the locals and the stakeholders. Uh, we have held open meetings. We put information in local media because we want to inform them about what we're doing, how we're planning to do it, and for some issues it's important to inform them when we're uh, doing it. And uh, we also have now made brochure about the year 2015 and sent to all households so they can read about uh, what we have been doing if they have, don't have time to come to our meetings. Uh, we, of course, meet with the relative authorities and special stakeholders group as needed. Uh, one thing that we have also done, we have had special meetings regarding tourism and recreation because those are activities that are ongoing at the same time as we are constructing. And that has been very useful for, for us and hopefully for them as well. And we uh, plan keeping up those meetings and these activities. But uh, the thing that I was going to give you an insight into now is a project that we are developing with others in the area to monitor possible changes or impact in the area after we are up and running. The project is called uh, the Northern Sustainability Project. And we at Landsvirken, we are lucky, we built upon uh, an experience from a similar project in the eastern part of Iceland, which is related to a hydropower station there and aluminum smelter. And this has been running for nine years now, the monitoring part of it. But of course, the stakeholder engagement started a few years earlier. Sustainability and local responsibility and of course the environmental aspects as well, are very important for us uh, at Landsvirkjön in all our operations. And thus it's important for us to monitor the effect that our operation will have when we're coming into a, a new, like in this area, a new small society. As I said before, there's around 4,000 people living there and we are coming in there with 90 megawatt power station. And uh, it's important, uh, I think, as well, that we do this because then we um, start collecting data that there's consensus about what data are we collecting and why are we doing it and for what purpose. Because then when we start talking about the changes that have happened, we have some like actual data to talk about and for discussion and debate rather than having maybe to rely on more uh, beliefs and emotional arguments. This is a project in progress. Uh, we are in the development phase of it. And when uh, developing a, pro a project like this, you first start thinking about who should be participating, which stakeholders should be sit at the table. And of course, it's important to get as many views and aspects to the table so everyone, so the project will be successful and everyone will be working in agreement. For the projects that we are working on, it is the constructors and future operators, is Landsvirkjun, the transmission line company Landsnet, and as well as the industrial operator that is uh, on Bakke at the town of Husavik, PSCC Bakke Silicon. Uh, another issue that is important that is to wonder about what area will be affected. Where will the impact be and, in, and how far do you stretch? You can see up there the picture that we are, or the map that we are working with. The pink area is the center area that we believe will be directly impacted, the society in that area. But also um, the other, the purple one and the green one to the east and the west, but maybe in a less degree. How we found this area or how it is um, it de defined, it, the dominating factor is the tra travel, travel time to work, but also municipal boundaries. The time frame that we have set for us is to develop indicators before the end of this year, because we are planning to be up, up and operating in 2017, and we want to be ready at that time with fully developed indicators, having collected the baseline data, put up a website so everyone can have a look at the information and follow up on the project. And I believe that we will manage to do that within that time frame. The development of indicators, that is the main task at the moment. 
And when we are wondering and deciding on what indicators we should develop, then we look into the results of meetings with stakeholders. But since 2009, there have been meetings with stakeholders in the area. Everyone that wants to, those are open meetings, so everyone can come, but also we try to encourage people from authorities and institutions and specialists to come to those meetings and discuss together in workshop what are the expectations and what are the main concerns. And, and then we built upon that what we are going to monitor in the future. We also, in the meetings, put up, like in the first meetings, those were the main questions, but now we're later on in the project, we have started to put up possible indicators and ask people, do you find these appropriate? Are, are there some, are, is there something they were missing? So this has been a process that we've been working on for some time now. Another things that are very important are the results from environmental impact assessments, as well as monitoring condition and permits. Because these, uh, because there you can find indicators that are well developed, they have gone through open consultation uh, progress according to laws and regulations, and everyone has been able to take part in that process, uh, both uh, the general public as well as institutions and regulatory authorities. So sometimes you can go there and find the appropriate indicator for the expectation and concerns without having to put a lot of work into it. And by doing that, you know you have the data available because that is something that uh, the, the operator will have to monitor anyway. Yes. And there are also things uh, are regarding the indicators themselves. We group them into the three groups of economy, society, and environment. And the plan is to try to have an uh, equal amount or something about that for each of the categories. That is something that we've learned from the project in the East, for example. So that in the beginning, there were uh, a lot of indicators for the environment, fewer for society, and not so many for the economy. And in that project, they have been working uh, towards increasing the indicators regarding the economy part. But it's important also that the data for, for the indicators is available after you are in operations, so you can actually get information and apply it in the project. The indicators also have to be appropriate and reliable. And when I say that, I mean that the information you get out of the indicators has to be something that is measuring the expectation and concerns that we are trying to follow up on. So there has to be a, a link there. And also, of course, they need to be understandable to everyone, and the cause-effect relationship needs to be clear as well. So these are things that you know, the contractors, especially as they are working with us, are looking into when they are determining and developing the final indicator to be monitored. Um, in addition to the stakeholder meetings I told you about earlier, we also had had a workshop for specialists only where we've asked them to come and have a look at the work that we have done already and give us advice and screen, screening and review as well. That has been very useful. Um, as I said earlier, we haven't decided up on the indicators yet, but I put up here some uh, possible candidates just to give you a kind of insight into where we're going with this. I also want to point out to you this picture. I think it's a very good example. We that are working in this project, and I think Landsvirken uh, as a whole, we're very proud of this construction project at Thistarikir. Uh, and so far, everything has been going well, both for the construction part and also in the communicating with the stakeholders. And we, we, get, and we feel that we get good support towards the project in the area. And I don't know how well you see it up there, but you see the cranes in the forefront that are building the power station house. But in the back, you can see horse that are fenced in while the travelers are resting in the hut, which is the red house there in the back. And there, then there is sheep uh, grazing in the green area or the grass up on the mountain. Uh, I guess that some of you are going up to Thaisteraker on Friday in the field trip. But I cannot promise you that the Northern Light will be there at that time. So I want to end my speech here with a beautiful picture from the area. We are very lucky in this project that one of our staff members, who has actually been part of this project for, from the beginning, 
he is an excellent photographer. So it's very nice making presentations, having to be able to go through all these beautiful pictures and choose. That's the most difficult part when putting a presentation for this project. So I want to thank him. I see him here in the audience. And I give him credits for the pictures that I've been showing you. <laughs>